Hello everybody and welcome back to the ASUS YouTube channel. This is JJ once again and we're bringing you another uh, performance oriented overview. So as you guys that are familiar with the channel and the different content that we like to bring you, uh, you guys know that we like to showcase a lot of GPU related performance results. Um, and this video is not going to be any exception to that. Uh, this time around we're actually going to be doing some performance showcase with our brand new GTX 670 DirectCU2 graphics card, uh, specifically the top edition. So one of the things that we want to take a look at here is going to be the performance uh, of what the GTX 670 offers in terms of SLI and the scaling uh, performance that it offers when we scale from one card to two cards all the way up to the maximum supported for the GTX 670 three-way SLI. So I think you're going to be pretty interested in the results that we're uh, going to be able to show you here on our X79 platform. And with that, let's go ahead and start to cover some of the testbed componentry that we have uh, for this review. So right off the bat right here, uh, underneath everything, is our actual Rampage 4 Extreme. It's an X79 motherboard, it's our flagship ROG board. And uh, while this board supports 4 SLI, uh, we're using it for a couple of purposes in terms that um, while we're going up to a maximum of three-way, we wanted a four-way capable board because we're actually going to be incorporating our uh, brand new PCIe uh, ROG gaming grade sound card with the Zonar Phoebus. So that's part of the reason why we've picked a four-way capable board. Um, more so, you guys might have some questions as why we picked X79. Really, in terms of the actual PCIe lanes that you have, it's a much more robust platform of being able to keep high-end multi-GPU configurations, um, but without sacrificing sometimes active connectivity for things like front USB or additional SATA controllers, eSATA and things along those lines. So while we do definitely have Z77 boards that do have the ability to run three-way and even four-way configurations, um, definitely I think that for you guys that are interested in the enthusiast segment, X79 is a better option uh, for going with three-way and four-way configs. Um, moving on from there, you can see right here we've got our brand new uh, GTX 670 DirectCU2 top graphics card. It's featuring of course our full non-reference design, so the Digi Plus VRM, our SCP power components, and our new high performance uh, DirectCU2 heat pipe and fan assembly design. Uh, awesome thing about this one is uh, for you guys that don't necessarily always like our triple slot designs, um, this card is only a two slot card, but you still get outstanding acoustics in terms of it being really, really quiet, um, but also getting a really impressive level in terms of cooling performance where it exceeds the, the reference standard. Uh, moving from there, uh, we've of course got Zygmatex Prime CPU cooler with 140 millimeter fan. That's keeping our Extreme Edition uh, Core i7 uh, 3960X, nice and cold in terms of the actual frequency that we're running at, which it's moderately overclocked, almost about 4 gigahertz. We've then got uh, Corsair's Dominator GT memory, 32 gigabytes of it, running at 1866. Uh, moving over from there, in terms of the actual storage, we have the Corsair Force GT 120 gigabyte SATA 6G SSD. So that's uh, giving us nice snappy performance in terms of our booting, as well as, of course, launching all our benchmarks and overall running this testbed. And then lastly, a very key component that we have here is going to be the power supply. Uh, we've tapped Corsair's AX 1200 watt PSU. Uh, this is definitely actually going to be overkill for a, th uh, a three-way configuration. Um, I actually, you'd be entirely okay with using, let's say, uh, the Corsair AX uh, 850 uh, and still being able to run a three-way configuration with all the same specifications without any problems at all. Uh, but uh, we've gone ahead and tapped it just because of the high performance, high quality power delivery, and the 90% efficiency. And uh, from there, of course, we've got our PA panel, uh, which is our 2560 panel, which we're going to be using to give you guys test results at both 2560 by 1440, as well as 1920 by 1080. So that overall gives you guys a little bit of perspective in terms of what we're doing on the testbed side. Uh, from there, let's actually get over into detailing what we're going to be doing on the testing side. And we've gone ahead and covered a quick overview in terms of what we're doing for this video, the test bed. Lastly here, we just want to give you guys a little bit of clarification in terms of uh, the benchmark that we're running. So we're going to be doing Alien vs. Predator. As we noted before, we're going to be doing 2560 runs as well as 1080p runs. And uh, we're going to go be running them a couple of times to give us a, an overall weighted average. Now keep in mind that I'm going to be providing you uh, feedback results that are essentially kind of approximated and weighted. The main reason being is that with the GPU boost technology that NVIDIA has as part of their new Kepler architecture, you do have slight variations in terms of the max GPU frequency that's achieved under game load. So in some situations, maybe the GPU frequency might be running at, let's say, like 1200 megahertz, and then it might change a little bit less, maybe 1180. And as such, you might have a slight variance, either have a little bit higher frame rate or a little bit lower frame rate. Um, so with that, when I tell you, okay, the approximate frame rate was, let's say, 60 to about 63, it's because there's a little bit of variance depending on the GPU boost, but it's not gonna be too much of a delta. Uh, so from there, let's actually get started on testing.
Okay guys, we've gone ahead and finished up the first run and uh, we got some pretty nice numbers. So at 2560 by 1440, uh, we have an overall uh, performance number of between about 60 to about 63 frames. And for the 1080p run, we were a little bit uh, higher than that at about 100 to about 103 frames. So next up, we're gonna go ahead and take a look and see what scaling looks like with two-way configurations. So that's gonna be two GTX 670 DirectCU 2 top graphics cards. Okay guys, here you can see that we have our one GTX 670 DirectCU 2 graphics card installed in our primary by 16 slot. So we're going to go ahead and add the secondary card. Now I want to make one note that you're going to see that I'm using actually a three-way enabled SLI bridge. Um, I prefer this actually uh, for configurations where I'm going to have dual slot spacing. So essentially I'm going to have a slot uh, in between two graphics cards to aid in actually breathing to give us overall better cooling performance. It's a little bit more rigid in terms of the installation and I like also the look. So on uh, the majority of our three-way capable boards you should have a three-way way bridge that you can use instead of the standard SLI ribbon. Uh, now you can go ahead and use the ribbon if you wanted to. Uh, now we're also going to be, as we noted earlier in our test bed, uh, including our Zonar Phoebus. This is our brand new uh, high-end ROG gaming grade sound card. So an awesome sound card, dedicated headphone amp, really high quality awesome uh, game oriented technologies. So this is going to be cool. Now we've got a couple of different options in terms of the PCIe expansion. We could go ahead and uh, let's say pop it in here. Uh, still leave a slot and then put the graphics card here. So if we bring that over, we go ahead and install as so and then put your bridge in and still leave a little bit of spacing there to aid in the breathing for that card. Or you, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and have this card be slanted here. So we could go ahead and, and, and move this guy over and actually pop it here into uh, the last slot. So it's up to you in terms of the configuration you want. I prefer this option because here we're directly on the back plane. We're still allowing for some air ventilation and here we're not directly blocking the fan, but up to you in terms of your configuration. So let's go ahead and get this installed. Okay guys, we've gone ahead and wrapped up two-way SLI results and uh, we've got some really nice scaling, essentially about as good as you could get uh, in a two-way configuration. So for 2560 by 1440, we've gone ahead and we've jumped up to uh, literally about double the performance metric, uh, 120 as our essential average. So uh, with our baseline out at one single card, we were essentially looking at about 60 frames. We jumped over essentially 120 frames. So awesome improvement. For 1080p, we see also additionally really, really great scaling. And we've gone over from that previous about 100 to about 103 frames to uh, about a little bit over 190 frames in terms of our actual overall average. So overall, some really nice gains in terms of two-way configurations. Next up, let's take a look at three-way SLI. Okay, guys, so we're now gonna go ahead and add the third card. So we're gonna go ahead and remove our three-way bridge here. We're gonna remove our zone or Phoebus just initially. And we're gonna bring over our third card. Now you have the option that you could go ahead and install the third card here. I'm gonna to prefer to put it on the bottom slot and keep breathing room for the primary top card. Top card tends to have the highest workload, so it tends to produce the highest heat. So we wanna to try to aid in its ability to go ahead and have additional heat dissipation. So that's the reason why I'm going with this configuration. Plus, we could still once again go ahead and have our uh, Phoebus card installed here and still have that, that additional breathing room. Now, uh, as I noted earlier, when I was using a three-way uh, three SLI hardware bridge, even for two-way, I'm actually gonna be using the four-way SLI bridge that comes with our uh, Rampage 4 Extreme uh, because I like this configuration, once again, a little bit more in terms of the rigidity. So let's go ahead and get this installed here. And uh, this card, of course, would be firmed up once we have all the screws in place, but uh, there we go. Okay guys, as you saw, we've finished up some awesome results here 
uh, in terms of running a three-way SLI configuration with our GTX 670s uh, DirectCU2 top graphics cards. So in terms of our performance numbers, really outstanding. Uh, for three-way SLI at 2560 by 1440, we were seeing uh, essentially about 175 frames as far as the average, and then for 1080p, uh, pump that up all the way up to about 275 frames in terms of the average. So overall, it really goes to show you uh, the, the quality of the architecture in terms of the scaling performance that it offers. I um, mean, the card in its outright in terms of its overall power efficiency, uh, performance in terms of tessellation, anti-aliasing uh, is outstanding. So you really have an awesome high-end enthusiast part. And then just when combined uh, within a three-way or two-way SLI configuration, really impressive scaling and really impressive performance, especially for you guys that are running these high-res resolution panels are maybe doing a single panel 3D gaming or multi-panel 3D gaming. Outstanding. So very cool performance. So from here, let's go ahead and wrap things up. Okay guys, we've gone ahead and finished up all the performance testing. Uh, you know, we broke down the test bed and we gave you an overview as far as what we were doing. So now just wrapping things up, um, you know, we've gone ahead and showed you uh, the performance in terms of what you're looking at for a standard GTX 670. Uh, and if you're interested, of course, at taking a look at what the performance is relative to other, uh, you know, popular titles that are out there in the marketplace right now, definitely check out uh, a lot of the reviews that are going up and you'll be able to find out that information or head over to GeForce.com where you get some really good detailing in terms of the performance metric across more titles. Uh, that being said, we wanted to show you guys uh, the performance potential of what we're seeing with Kepler and how it performs uh, with this new uh, high-end uh, high part and uh, overall really impressive results when you bring together a two-way or three-way capable board, uh, our GTX 670 DirectCU2 part, and you're going to get some awesome results. So whether you're, as we noted before, somebody that's interested in high image quality uh, in terms of you know things like tessellation, soft shadows, ambient occlusion, um, TXXA or FXXA anti-aliasing implementations, all that goodiness, man, this is the card to get. And uh, it's only gonna get better when you're considering two-way or three-way configurations, especially if you're pushing large resolutions or you're pushing three-way uh, three configurations. So uh, as always, if you guys enjoyed the content, please make sure to leave us uh, a commentary here on the YouTube page. Uh, make sure as always, please subscribe uh, so that we can keep bringing you guys more and more awesome content. And if you have any other comments that you wanna drop in some of our other social media channels, definitely head over to Asus uh, on Facebook as well as at Twitter. So thank you.